Uh, okay, when I started off with, uh, I had an ambition to study veterinary science in my school days. And, and in my case, I used to hail from a family where entrepreneurship was supposed to be a sin. So I cannot, actually I was not allowed to enter my home and I was not allowed to say that, hey mom, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Because I used to hail from this non-business middle class family where, uh, uh, because actually my dad used to work for the armed forces as a scientist. and. Um, uh, and at the same time, uh, actually when I started off with, I didn't have a home computer. So uh, uh, at the school, I had all my friends in my school who had home computers. So because who were supposed to be in that elite circles of my friends who had home computers who were actually, like, who were actually showing off in front of me by exchanging floppy disk or by exchanging CDs in front of me. And I always used to feel that, okay, I'm, a, I'm actually an odd man out. and. Um, and at the same time, I didn't want to walk to my dad and I, I didn't want to ask him that, hey, uh, I have, okay, in my school I see everybody having home computers, but I've not got one, so um, uh, I, want you to, I want you to invest in a home computer for me. But uh, I thought uh, I'll certainly make use of the pocket money which I had. So I had a, I had a pocket money of 15 rupees every month. And uh, I thought if I have to upskill myself with some, maybe with some IT knowledge, I could start visiting internet shops. So if I had to visit the cyber centers or this internet shop, I had to pay approximately exorbitant 100 rupees every hour, which was, um, at the same time, I couldn't afford it because I had a pocket money of 15 rupees every month. And uh, I could say, as an entrepreneur, somebody who started very young, um, I'm an extremely impatient guy, so I didn't, want to, I didn't want to save the pocket money for months long to visit the internet shop for one fine, uh, maybe for an hour. I thought I will start working in this internet cafe itself because um, actually from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, I saw the shop was not open because the shop owner used to shut down the shop for his lunch break. So uh, actually after my school, uh, I went to the shop owner and I started to, I started to speak to him saying that, hey, uh, I've got my school which gets over at about half past noon. And at the same time, I see that your shop is not open from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. So is there any way that I could open up your shop in your absence? Because when you leave out for lunch, I can manage your shop. And in exchange, I would use the internet for free of cost. So it was like a barter system. And uh, I could say the internet shop owner was quite impressed. And, um, and actually, it was my first deal in my life. And it was the best deal in my life. So uh, I spoke to him as if I was offering him a favor and I was not expecting a favor in return. So. Of course, over the years, I learned it was about sales and marketing. So, uh, of course, it is how it got started. Uh, I started to work in this internet shop after my school hours. Um, I was a fan of open source technologies. I started to learn how to build websites because my ultimate objective at that point in my life was to buy a home computer and I wanted to show off in front of my friends. And uh, I thought uh, I could be a freelancer who could build websites for American companies. And uh, as a freelancer, if I'm able to earn something, I would uh, uh, probably I would invest on a home computer. And uh, of course, when you're a freelancer, you also have to make a CV because when you're like, you sending out mails to American companies, asking them to engage your services to build their websites. Of course, all these uh, companies in the US used to ask me for my CV. And uh, it was the first time in my life I ever made a CV. And it was the last time in my life I, I made a CV. So, uh, of course, in the CV, uh, I had to mention my academic qualifications. So I was still in my house school. I was in my ninth standard in my school. I had finished my, I had finished my eighth standard. So uh, I had to mention that, okay, my academic qualification is I've actually finished my, I finished my eighth grade in, in so-and-so percentage and from so-and-so school. At the moment, I'm studying my ninth standard. And I also had to mention some of my skill sets. I knew how to build websites. And, and after I circulated my CV to these American companies, expecting them to engage my services, I had all these companies in the US uh, who started to reply me saying that, you know what? I don't think you still have a mustache in your life and you want to build websites for us. So actually, we feel very insecure in undertaking services from school kids, so we don't work with you. So I could say it was the same point in my life where I was really ignited to be an entrepreneur because I felt that um, uh, like, why is the outside world assessing my skill sets, looking at my age or academic qualifications? So I felt that, uh, at least in my case, I'll start my own organization where I would offer employment to those um, 
actually to those eligible unemployed youth. And, and we thought we will not ask for their marks cards or their academic certificates when we recruit them into the company because we thought we will we'll focus on their skill sets and the attitude that the individual has. So um, as, a HR, uh, as a mandate in our uh, HR policy, we ban marks cards while we recruit because we really wanted to uh, assess the individual skill sets. And at the same time, uh, I was highly inspired by the success path of Microsoft founder, Mr. Bill Gates. Uh, I always looked up to him as my role model. So I thought when he could start his company at his backyard, I, I could also start my company from this internet shop. And, um, and I knew that I could not incorporate my company until I was 18 years in India, because according to Indian laws, I had to be 18 years. I thought the best thing is if I could uh, incorporate, my, incorporate my organization, the, probably in the US, as Ace Corporation Company. Uh, I happened to find a friend on the internet uh, who happened to be an American. I never had seen him in my life. He was about, he was about seven to eight years older to me. He was studying his master's in university. Our wavelengths matched, and, and we thought we will uh, we'll start a company as a, as a home office in the US. And we finally started off uh, our operations in the, operations in the US uh, at his apartment. And uh, I could say the best part was um, I still had the advantage to be in India because uh, actually we had this 11 hours difference in time. I still could attend my school in the morning in India. And in the evening, I was able to, I was able to manage the show for these American companies. And um, actually, in one point in my life, when uh, I had signed a partnership with my friend in the US whom I had never seen in my life, I thought, OK, uh, I thought, OK, like, would he be actually very ethical? Would he be very loyal? I also had my friends who started to scare me that, hey, uh, like, actually, how could you sign a partnership with somebody whom you have never seen or whom you never have met in your life? Uh, at one point, I was slightly skeptical. But uh, I happened to see the matrimonial websites on the internet. And I thought, OK, like, actually, when somebody is willing to accept a marriage proposal with somebody whom they have not seen, and it happens on the internet, I. I started to feel that uh, I started to uh, I started to say to myself that okay, maybe at least at least uh, at least the risk levels are not so high as actually somebody uh, accepting a marriage over the internet. So um, I thought I'll accept this risk to sign a partnership with somebody whom I have not seen. So we finally uh, okay, we went ahead with the partnership. We had our operations in the U.S. and um, and at the same time, um, I could say I still remember when I was about 15 years old. Uh, I had to recruit my first few employees in the U.S. who, uh, like actually, who had like who had sent their applications. So I had to recruit approximately five employees, and um, when I had to interview them on the phone, I used to have these applicants asking me that, okay, uh, okay, I know that like, you are the CEO of this company, but I wanted to ask, like, actually, why does your voice sound so amateurish? You sound like a school kid, and I had to reply to them that, uh, actually, I'm still 15 years, I'm still in my school, and. Uh, I started this company uh, company in the last year, and all these applicants used to reply back saying that um, I would not want my boss to be half of my age, so I would not like to accept this job offer. So uh, I would not like to I would not like to work under you. And uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, I I simply could not accept rejection. So I always wanted to make every I wanted to make this no into an yes at uh, wait every setback. So to all these applicants, I started to I started to motivate to them, saying that okay, uh, ours is a flat hierarchical organization, so we have no system as a subordinate or we have no system as a boss. Uh, and at the same time, I'm not expecting anybody to work under me, but uh, I'm looking for an opportunity to work with you, uh, because it was the model which we started to which we, which we started to build, where like, we really started to emphasize on the flat hierarchical system in the company, by which we were able to minimize the attrition inside the company as well. And uh, I finally had these five applicants on board. So in the first year, we had approximately five employees. And on the second year as well, we had actually we still had five employees. So we were not able to scale up in the second year because uh, uh, because we were not able to meet our sales targets. I thought, okay, I still have to wear the salesman's cap now. And I started to I initiated a mail campaign. I used to send emails to these American companies asking them. Uh, if I could make websites. All the American companies whom I used to send out emails were actually small companies or micro enterprises in the US, which were actually manufacturing probably automobiles, spare parts, or were, were manufacturing some machine tools. 
So I used to send them an email indicating that, hey, I can make a website for you guys. I saw that you have not got a website, so would you be interested to engage my company to build a website? And, and all, this, uh, all these American companies uh, actually started to respond to my email saying that, I highly appreciate your email, Mr. Gopinath, but I don't think I should be investing on a website because even without a website, I'm able to meet my sales target, so I don't need a website. And, um, and of course, it's again the same story as an entrepreneur, and, and when you're very young, you simply cannot accept rejection, so it was the same case in me, so I couldn't sleep the whole night when somebody used to reject my service. Uh, I went to the yellow pages on the internet, and I made a wild search on the yellow pages on the internet called as automobile spare parts or called as the machine tools. And the advantage with these yellow pages is that uh, it starts, uh, it has a business listing of all the manufacturers in the US, and in case if these companies have a website, it also indicates if this company has a website with their website address. If they have not got a website, it only, maybe it only shows up their phone number and email addresses. And I started to open up a few anonymous email accounts, and uh, I started to send them an email to all these companies which didn't have a website. I started to extract these email addresses of the companies which only had email address. I sent them an email from my anonymous mail account indicating that uh, I would like to sign a partnership with you to import your automobile components or your machine tools. Could I have a look at your website, please? So all these companies which didn't have a website used to reply back saying that, I'm extremely sorry, Ms. XYZ, we've not got a website right now. So I wouldn't be able to share my website address, but you can find the attachment of our products. And from the same email address, I used to reply them saying that, okay, so if you have not got a website, you don't meet my supplier standards, so we don't work with your company. So uh, it was an ignition for all these American companies that uh, okay, we thought we were able to ignite them on, on the opportunities that existed. Uh, so a company which used to build approximately five websites every month, we started to build 50 websites every month. And, uh, and of course, accordingly, we increased our sales. I used to send an email in my own name saying that. Sorry? OK, sure. So accordingly, we started to increase our sales. and. Uh, Next, of course, it is how we were able to scale up our organization to what it is right now.